in August 1967, I arrived for the first time in Guinea. My name is Zenzile Miriam Makeba Kakwashu. Kava Maiketi the name of Tigumam Kwashu. I was coming from the United States where I had been already in exile from my country, South Africa. It was wonderful, so many people at the airport to receive, I mean, little me. <laughs> and I didn't speak one word of French. My first impressions were you know, I didn't know what to think because I had never been to an, an, an independent country south of the Sahara. <laughs> to me, it was like an, an, an opening of a new world. I mean, it is breathtaking. I had never seen such beauty for a long time and I became more homesick just looking at the beauty of this country when I first came here. The president secretary was then president of this country. He led this country to independence in 1958. And so the president said to me, if you ever came to stay in Guinea, where would you like to stay? And I chose the region of Dalaba. It reminded me a lot of home being in Dalaba. This is the first place I came to, when I first came to Dalaba, I didn't have a house here then. In 1967, I visited Guinea, I went around the country. When we came to Dalaba, this is the house in which I stayed for the time that I was in, in Dalaba. And um, every time I came back to Guinea, if I come to Dalaba, I would stay here. And this is where the president used to come and, and stay, and that's why it means a lot to me. This is the room where they used to receive all the guests, and it's like a sitting and dining room, as you can see. It would be packed here, especially when the president came. There'd be people outside playing drums, singing. It was a wonderful experience for me. And the striking thing, too, is that when, even though the people were poor, they, had no, they didn't have much, but when they were told that I was a visitor coming from a troubled country like South Africa, the people would cry for me. At first I, I didn't really understand, but then I did understand that wherever they are standing is theirs, is their land. And they can live wherever they want without anyone telling them, you can't live there, you can't go there. And that was the big difference between here
I never went to school to learn how to sing that I had. It came more so from my mother. My mother was a traditional healer. She had certain powers that uh, most of our traditional healers have. So my mother always had beautiful songs, and I learned a lot of songs from her and from my grandmother. I can't heal anybody, but I, uh, there are times when I, I can feel things, and there are times when I'm singing, and there are times that something else, someone else takes over uh, from me. I can't explain it, really, but I can feel it. Dancing on the moon, may I love you? But singing the lengoni, me she, oh, ya se ya niyo, se na de pege le te ni she, oh, me love you. But in Dom, be Tim Pilin, Sansa Lenjani, Wong Shia Lenjani. But in the land of Connie, the end of a big sensing and I can never really leave this country because I have left a part of me here. In my whole life, I only had one child, and her name was Bongi. She was born on December 20th, 1950, in Pretoria. When my daughter died, I was living here, and uh, she had to be buried here. Even if I wanted to take her remains back to South Africa, I would not have been able to do it, because at the time I was still banned. So this being my second home, it was normal and natural that she be buried here. So she was my only child and um, left me two grandchildren and two died here too. She would have had four children.
At home, a lot of people have said I should come and take her remains back to South Africa. But her children say, Grandma, please don't do that. You must not disturb Mommy's soul. God wanted her to be buried in Guinea, and she's there, and Guinea will always be home to all of us. Walking through the valley, that is where he met his love. She was a walking down the hillside, kind of on her head. 